Hi guys, it's now Tuesday morning. I forgot to say goodnight again last night. The reason for that is I came home, I had my tea, I realised that Michelle had had issues with the computer converting video, so I jumped onto that and it was there till nine o'clock. Then I stupidly tried to watch a programme from nine o'clock. Susanna Lips comes, Hidden Killers in the Victorian Home. If you've ever seen that, fantastic programme, or if you've not seen that, fantastic programme, I can highly recommend it. But anyway, I fell asleep watching it, so I can only recommend the first 30 minutes of it, I suppose. Then I had to go to bed, and I was that tired I forgot to say good night. So with that, it's a good night from last night, and it's a good morning for Tuesday morning. Let's get some coffee in there. <laughs> guys that's it it's time for me to go off to work a couple of news items this morning that caught my eye one is space tourist there's a company going to take two tourists around the moon next year they reckon should be good and also the prison services in crisis lots of strikes and anyway with that i'm gonna have to get on because i'm really not concentrating and i'm waffling Picture shot. Alan Fell, put it in gear. Okay, guys, off to where we go. I had a bit of a mistake this morning, or last night actually. When I went to bed in a hurry, I left my phone downstairs. Now, my phone is my alarm clock. Like many people do, they use the phone for everything. And I use it as my alarm clock. Now, luckily for me, I heard it. <laughs> all the way downstairs. I don't know how I managed to hear it all the way downstairs, but I was, there, I was a nearly, nearly an oversleep. I think it's subconsciously you wake up and you're waiting for it and, you know. But, yeah, very lucky to get up this morning. I forgot. Anyway, with that, let's get on. Hey guys, I forgot to say, it's pancake day today. Yeah, we're gonna get pancakes tonight, Shrove Tuesday. Yes. Everybody loves pancakes. Let's see what Michelle Russell's up for us. Moving on. What a work. Took me so long to get here, but here I am. Now I want to go home. Zero degrees, let's get in, get the Tuesday over with. I'll speak to you after the working day's done. Hey guys, that's the working day over with. Thank Crunchy. I've just heard that there's a traffic jam up, up, up in front of us and I'm just wondering what to do. I suspect that they'll have shut the road. Not the road that I'm going to go on, but the main roads, which means that they'll all swing off and come onto the road that I'm going on to. Oh. Yeah, I'll just not worry about it. Take it, be what it'll be. Moving on. Yeah, here we are, the queue, in the queue, as suspected. Never mind. I don't know why we're in the queue. I don't want to winch that. No, I didn't. Anyway, it is what it is. Moving on. Okay, guys, like I said on the way to work this morning, today is pancake day. Tuesday and what Michelle is doing now is pancakes well the last pancake I think mm -hmm. so are you using the uh, our standard recipe yeah which is uh, 225 grams of plain flour, tablespoon of baking powder, teaspoon of sugar, a pinch of salt, two eggs, 300 mils of milk, 30 grams of melted butter. Is that why I go and pick butter up? Actually, I knew that we were going to need it this weekend. I didn't buy any when I did the shopping. I think that'll do. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you through, yeah. Uh... We're on offer. So. Alright, you want to go and quickly put your slabs on and I'll... Uh... Are you going to wait for the pancake? I want to wait till you flip. 
Are you going to flip? Some people would argue I did that years ago. So see, you've got your new jeans on. Mm -hmm. Going back to punk. We'll speed this bit up. <laughs> Is that you pretending to speed something up? Yeah, you'll have to speed that up now and take that out. And there we go. One flip can pancake and I'm gonna go and get my slobs on and relax. <coughs> okay guys, it comes that time every 24 months when you do a phone upgrade. And today is my 24 month period and I've got my phone upgrade. And in 23 months, I might get it out of the package. It's a pair of scissors there. No, I'm manly. You're manly, therefore you're going to make it really, really difficult for yourself. Whew. Easy. We've got bits and bobs. And... Your SIM card. My SIM card, which, believe it or not, I will not touch. Which I will be sorting that out for me. So, iPhone 7. I did get the right one, didn't I? I think so. I'm following seven. You wanted the plus though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is the plus you've got? Yep, I would say definitely yes. That's right then. Can you imagine? <laughs> so I have gone for the black iPhone 7 Plus. And the reason. I wanted this one is for the camera, believe it or not. But I really fancy the camera. Oh, it's one of them bit funny buttons. There's no point turning it on, there's no SIM card in it. So there's my black iPhone 7 Plus, which is a bit slippy. But yeah, I can use it. My hands are big enough to use it. It's a little bit slippy, so there's a case coming. For it. Before we do that, let's see what else is in the box. Earphones to lightning connector. Charging cable. Plug, obviously. And that is it. Another yeah. set of headphones for me, is it? Well, no, the lightning connector. It should just it should still work. Yeah, I use uh, Bluetooth, so I'm not bothered one little bit about the fact that they're taking the uh, what do you call it the headphone jack. headphone jack out because I actually like I said I use Bluetooth if wireless earphones and when I don't watch what I'm doing I take them off and drop them on the toilet like I did first time I got out of her but never mind. So, in a bit, Michelle will get that one fired up for us, won't you? Yeah. Moving on. And everything you see here has been recreated. It's narrower here, stripped out the original roof, put a more modern one that created more space, and then put two extra floors in here and used it as barracks for about 300 soldiers. After the army left, there was a need for a set of barracks. So rather than the project was started, to restore the great hall here, how it might have looked in the time of King James IV. And after they prepared all the outside walls and removed all the interior floors, the next big challenge was to recreate the original roof. And the roof you see up here is an oak carbine roof. And it's based on drawings and plans. We still have the original. 
that was rebuilt in 1997 and it took about seven months to build. Now there you have 650 tons of oak and holding it together there's no nails. Instead you've got about 4,000 wooden pegs and all the way comes down off the main beam, then the support beam calls the crux and the crux then goes down onto the hammer beam. And the hammer beam, this roof gets its name from, that is the horizontal beam with the carving at the end. The reason why they might be called hammer beams is they look a little bit like a hammer. The way it then goes down the brace to the stone corbel at the bottom. And you might think when you look up there that the roof looks a bit like the inside of a ship. And the reason why it does is that the original was actually built by shipbuilders. And the shipbuilders were good at building ships, so that's the way they built the roof. Now inside the Great Hall, in here is where the kings held their parliaments. But also in here is where they, where they held their grand feasts and celebrations. And in this time, this Great Hall has some rather spectacular ones. But there's one thing the Stuarts were good at, is having a good time. And the grand feast was held in here in 1566 by Mary Queen of Scots. And this is to celebrate the baptism of her son in the future James VI. And to fund this feast, Mary has to borrow about 12,000 Scots pounds, which in today's money is about two million pounds. The money is well spent, James has a very lavish baptism. In the chapel, outside you have tournaments and jousting. Inside the great hall here, you've got a feast that goes on for three days and three nights. And then to end these celebrations, you've got a grand firework display, possibly the first in Scotland. And then in 1594, King James II holds another grand feast in here his first son, Prince Henry's baptism. And has this feast included a chariot laden with cakes and pastries brought around the hall, people dressed up as gods and goddesses. But the highlight was the fish course. Because to bring it in, it was brought in on a ship that was about 18 feet long, and the mast was only 50 foot tall, so it was sails, rigging, and 36 cannons that actually fired one shot, which must have been, a I was to see, and even more impressive, how did they get it into the hall? The doors you came in there were quite small, so it must have been a feat of engineering bringing it in. And even today, the Great Hall is still used. If you want to hire out a grand setting for a wedding or a dinner, you can have it here inside the Great Hall. The dinners you have in here aren't quite as grand as they used to be, and thankfully, don't last for as long either. If you were to have been here for a feast, there are in big long tables and benches up and down the length of the halls. There are five great big fireplaces, burning logs to keep you nice and warm. On the walls you should have had wall hangings or tapestries. Mainly they are there to keep the heat in, but secondly, wall hangings and especially tapestries are incredibly expensive. So a big collection of these shows off your wealth. Behind you, well here we have the Minstrels Gallery. Up there you have musicians playing music, keep you entertained. And halfway up the wall here you have this archway. That archway is from the floor. Trumpets up there, they're not musicians. Their job is to now survive of the king into the great hall. Then you have the queen or any other royalty in this hall, they sat on this end on the royal dais. And the reason why they sit up here is it's raised. The royalty always sits above everyone else. But it's also the brightest end. And here they have these great big bay windows and they flood the dais with light. Which means when they're sitting up here, they're always bathed in light, which means they're very visible. And that's what they wanted. These windows back in 1503 were very unusual because these windows actually had glass in them. And the window that had glass in them is unusual. Glass is expensive, you can't make it in Scotland, you import it in from Italy. Having windows this size is a way of showing off your wealth. Also, when the king is here, they come with red cloth. And here, that's with the cloth of the state. And on that cloth, you get the coat of arms of the king of Scots. very centre, got a red line on a golden shield and that's the lion rampant and that's the royal emblem of Scotland. And talk about the Hongar, holding a sword and maybe a crown. The lions, they represent the King of Scots, representing bravery, strength and majesty. The blow on the shield, you've got a golden chain, but the part of the chain is a chain made, made of thistles and at the base of that chain you have a man holding an egg-shaped cross and he is St Andrew. St Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland. Now what that represents is an order of chivalry called the Order of St Andrew. And the Stuarts were the head of this order. If you were invited to join this, you'd be loyal to the Stuart kings. But even if you must notice, you have something slightly more unusual. You have two unicorns. Now, the unicorn is a heraldic symbol of Scotland. You might think, why a unicorn? Unicorns don't exist. 
Remember, you said that back then, you could hold your ball. As far as they're concerned, unicorns do exist. Just because you haven't seen one, didn't mean they were out there. And the unicorn is a very powerful magical animal, and its horn cures any poison. So back then, it's a symbol of purity, justice, and strength. But the unicorn up there has also got another meaning, a much more important meaning. Because in many believers, the unicorn is also a symbol of Christ. As the unicorn is killed, it goes back to life. So the barns up there, another meaning. Because, because as the unicorn is resurrected, just like how Christ was resurrected, and we've got the unicorn representing Christ, as we have the unicorn just holding up the lion and the royal and the king, basically the strip which saved by everyone, they have the support of Christ, and that means they are the right to come to Scotland. Also, the motto you have up there, in my defence, that's the abbreviated form, the full English version is, in my defence, may God defend me, which is the motto of the King of Scots. Will the clock will have two votes? Feel free to come back and take a seat in them. Pace to the left, please on the right. Now, although the Stuarts were one of the longest royal dynasties in Scotland, kings and queens themselves were quite unlucky. Quite often, they would die quite suddenly, not in the nicest uh, of circumstances. This created a slight problem. The king died suddenly, quite often, a child was left to the, the throne. And if you were under 16, you couldn't rule. You had to be regent rules for you. I suppose this period of having a regent ruling was quite a long time because some of the Stuarts were very young in their crowns. Some of the youngest mourners ever to be crowned were under the age of three years old and some of them were crowned here at this castle. So we're going to head back into the courtyard and see some of these coronations took place. So let's like follow me this way. attention to these lines on the courtyard. Now these lines mark out Underneath here you have the foundations of the old chapel. And it's in the old chapel where some of the youngest monarchs were crowned. King James V, he's crowned King of Scots here in 1513, when he is just 17 months old. His daughter, Mary Queen of Scots, she's even younger. Because Mary becomes queen in 1542, when she is just six days old. She's crowned here at Stirling Castle, when she is just nine months old. And it said that Mary was so small, the cardinal, he had to hold the crown above her head for the entire ceremony. Now Mary's son James is baptised in a very lavish ceremony here, but he's almost the reason why this chapel is no longer standing. When James's son, Prince Henry, is born in 1594, he decides this chapel isn't grand enough for his baptism. James was something much bigger and much more impressive. This one is pulled down, and this one is built in its place, which we'll now head inside. Thank <laughs> you.